All right, so we're back. Uh, been playing around with uh, the sand for quite a bit, but uh, wanted to uh, put a little bit more detail uh, into uh, the foreground here elements of this sand. Uh, grabbing some more photo elements, uh, textures that I found. I believe this came from Mars, actually, as some sand dunes or whatever they may be from Mars. It had a cool pattern and texture that I like, so using the just regular warp tool in Photoshop, I'm able to, to tweak this uh, texture the way I like it. While I'm going to paint over this, uh, I'm going to lose a little bit of the detail uh, in that texture over time. It's really, really important to, to make sure that those details aren't completely lost. One of the great advantages, of course, of using photo textures in your concepts is it allows you to, to get that detail super, super fast, uh, like I did with the, the windows and the buildings. But it's also really, really important to establish scale. You have these small little details in your concept really, really help to establish the scale of everything else that's in the, in the environment. So these buildings are large. Having smaller details helps to emphasize that, and that's that works well in the textures. Also, you know, as I come in here and I'm fidgeting with little details in the building as well, those little details, while they take time, are, are pretty darn important to to get the, uh, the scale across. Playing around with these buildings a bit, I found that. You know, while uh, I had a great model to work with, it's uh, important to add uh, important details and elements that are part of the the scene. It's gathering a lot of reference for rooftops and the things that are on there. And it's amazing how much stuff is on the top of rooftops that we don't ever get to see. And so I'm trying to to add some of that. So. You know, it, it, those details are, are there. Also wanted to, to add a little bit more of this uh, encroaching sand into the buildings. I'm going to be adding these details in the sand, more and more sand at different times throughout the process here, the demo here. But all helps to to make the space feel like it's a real believable space. Later on I'm going to be adding quite a bit of atmospheric here into the concept and it would make sense that that sand would find itself all over the place, not just uh, buildings can just sink in there. They've, the sand has been blown in over hundreds of thousands of years and so we're going to see it in nooks and crannies all over the place. I uh, decided uh, here I needed to get rid of some buildings, I thought I'd come in here and copy and paste, uh, you know, already some textures from the building to cover up that, and then I just come in and clean over the top of that a little bit as well. That top of that other building, I think I left that behind the whole time. I don't know if I ever get around to, to finishing that at the end of this concept. Playing with more little details, I have a tendency to jump from spot to spot. I'll, I'll zoom in and polish a certain area, zoom out and see that I don't like a spot somewhere else, so I just jump over there. That's kind of how the, the whole thing goes for me. Probably smarter artists would uh, tackle an area and finish it completely. So again, playing with the forms here in the sand. Had some great textures coming in from the photo. I didn't want to lose that, and I liked to pushing the forms there a little bit more to make sure that those larger forms are kept in addition to the little details. Going to add uh, some decay here to the buildings. Probably not as much as you know might realistically be there after thousands of years of this, but uh, uh, I think it gets the the message across. Uh, it's you know, it's a kind of a, an important part of, of concept design. You know, we're not we're not creating 
there's sometimes a blur there and, and a lot of the finished artwork we see at times for concept artists in their portfolio is, is filled with really nice polished beautiful pieces and that's really really cool but you know the idea here with concept design is to, to create an idea fast and to get a message across quickly and so that doesn't often allow for the time to make it look really really pretty but I think there's some uh, beauty in the in the, the process itself in concept design I think uh, all of us uh, love to see so it's rough and it's dirty and but uh, if it if it gets the idea across then that's then that's the point so I'm coming in here quite a bit and throwing in some rough highlights uh, throughout the city at different points cutting away buildings just using the brush to cut edges out that uh, I want to loop. Coming back in with some texture brushes here to, to again kind of spread the the sand, the decay from the feel, gritty feel of this uh, environment. Gonna jump here into working with some atmospherics. Uh, wanted to, to create a lot of depth here uh, in this image so we're gonna Throw in a, a layer here of just kind of sand and dust. And then uh, Joseph uh, provided already a, a depth pass that he got to, from working on the 3D side of things. I use that as a channel to, to give me a, a selection that allows me to take advantage of that depth. Very efficient way. That depth pass uh, allows me to select the furthest things away or the things that are really, really close, and and get a nice gradient uh, feel to, to the depth. So I'm, you know, I can put a, a uniform pass of, of sand or dust, uh, you know, over the entire image. Select that uh, depth pass in the channel and cut straight from there. And depending on the way I've selected that channel, uh, I'm either Eliminating everything in the foreground or eliminating everything in the back. I'm working from that, and it's a really cool, cool feature that is a huge benefit to, for the concept process that, that comes from the 3D side of things. So again, uh, playing here with atmospherics. Important with the atmospheric side of things to use the lasso tool. Really common mistake for younger concept artists, younger or students uh, of concept art in Photoshop is to, you know, use the airbrush tool a little bit too much and use it all over the place, and the result is a, a uniformly fluffy feel to the entire piece, and that's not something we want. The airbrush tool is great and is very very useful. Combining that with tools that allow you to keep those edges is, is really, really important. So I'll use that to apply some nice glows or, or, or misty fog type feels, and then I'll use a lasso tool to make sure I, I get the edges right. So we're coming in here with some more highlights. Doing some more... Uh, Polish with the, the sand and the, the edges of the buildings. Still feel like, you know, those rooftops are, are a little bare. Like I said, I can't, I don't feel like I need to, to fill the entire thing up completely uh, the way you'd see it in real life, but uh, as much as you can do, uh, it helps. So you can create that scale and, or emphasize the scale of the, of the whole scene. It's amazing how important it is uh, to get those crisp edges throughout. I, I have a tendency uh, as a painter uh, uh, all of my career from starting as a traditional painter. Uh, I never had lasso tools to work with and stuff so I just kind of paint my paintbrush and but uh, making sure that you keep those sharp edges is essential.
So we're almost finished here with the environment uh, as far as I wanted to take it. Uh, working on some little details here, but uh, I wanted to uh, add some other you know, minor storytelling elements here into the concept. So I decided I wanted to paint in some rough figures in here that, again, help establish scale. Really give uh, everything a nice feeling of context. So I'm coming in here with a, a quick, hard brush to just get some quick forms in there. Applying the preserve transparency on that layer. I come back in with just some quick uh, marks that will give a feel of uh, clothing and and lighting on these characters as well. Come in with another layer to put some tracks in the ground quick just using a rough texture brush to, to get that and then uh, coming in with some shadows again using another layer hard light layer again allows me to to adjust the color in my shadows. Like I said, I love to come back and forth, jump from one spot to another, work on those figures briefly, and then I zoom out and I see I need something I need to fix uh, in the building, so I go back to that. That's just the way I do things. I am going to be coming back here very shortly and uh, working some more with these uh, characters. But first I'm going to jump back into some of these buildings here, get some more details in there. And add a little bit more atmospheric stuff here, some sand, some blowing sand and some uh, highlights here on these forms on the sand. Just finishing up some final details here. I'm going to add a couple uh, small details here to these characters. Help uh, play around a little bit more with the uh, storytelling element. thought it would be cool to, to give them some banners or flags thinking they might be part of some kingly expedition visiting a, a foreign very foreign land with uh, the addition of these little elements so we're coming to the end of uh, this demo i uh, hope you've liked the things you've seen here and, and learned from the process we have some great tools both on the 3d and, and 2d side that work fantastic together uh, it makes the, the process of, of creating concepts so much easier so here we have the final image. Joseph uh, created the base geometry in ZBrush. Uh, and then he used ZBrush to Keyshot Bridge to send it over to Keyshot. From there, he established a camera angle and then some passes. I then took those passes and brought them into Photoshop uh, to use as a starting point for my concept. So I hope this uh, tutorial uh, has been useful using ZBrush uh, in concept design. My name is Andrew Bosley, and you can find my work at bosleyart.com. From Joseph and I, happy ZBrushing. Uh, stay tuned for more videos on Z Classroom. Thanks.